You needn't bother. Not now. Nothing. It's more hurtful now. <laughs> Um, no, it is. It's flying like this, like the week. It's flying in, and I mean, to me, honest, I can't believe that tomorrow's the last day. Isn't that unbelievable? Yeah. It's going to be the best day yet. I have a feeling. There's something about it that I, I feel will be the best day yet. Something just is in my bones. What is it about tomorrow? Oh yeah, yeah. sorry, I forgot. But anyway, so Chris is leaving tomorrow. So Chris, I think. Mean, so Chris is leaving but it has been a quick week, right? One of the fastest weeks, yeah. you know, flies by. And then only earlier on, we were talking to Todd, Chris's replacement in my security department. And <laughs> we were talking about how we were talking about the character Reed, you know. And Todd, would you just do me a favor and stand up there? Just, would you just do a very quick stand up there? Now, look, this is a ginormous wow. man. Right? <laughs> He's a man's man. Look at that chest, look at that. I mean, there's barrels that make whiskey that are smaller than this man. <laughs> He was petrified going across the Carca Reed Bridge. And when we were talking about it, it felt like months ago that we were there. Like literally months ago. We've done so much since that bridge. And um, today was one of my favorite days. I gotta be honest, I loved today. Um, because I took a punt on something um, that I remembered as a child. I know I said this on the bus already. But you know, you have memories of Ireland and, and like, when I was younger, we would have gone on holidays every now and again around Ireland. We ended up going abroad a little bit more as, as my dad kind of got a little more shillings in his pocket. But, um, you know, you kind of, when you take people to your country, it, it, you're hoping it will show its best side. And um, I'm very proud. This is the third bus trip that I've taken. And each and every day of the bus trips that I've taken, showing people from different parts of the world around my country, and listening to Dennis talking about the stories and the history and Willie before Dennis, it makes me very proud to be an Irishman. And um, I know a lot of you have Irish in you, and even if you don't, you leave here feeling that you should. <laughs> so um, I hope that when you leave here that you're going home with fond memories, and as I said, a fraction of the pride that I have with you coming here and seeing it. Um, and then you work with the likes of Brian, and we've had um, uh, Brian before, and we had Michael before. There's lots of wonderful musicians in this country that are here to show you the talent and the culture that we have as well. So it is truly a great week and a week that I'm very proud of being involved. I didn't expect to be holding a South African eagle in my hands today. And that wasn't, wasn't on the agenda, but that's how Ireland are with South African eagles, you know. I'm very cultural people. Um, but anyways, it has been a great week. So we're going to do, I'm going to finish off with three pieces, um, two pieces, and then I'll pretend like the show's over. And then, you know, normally you would walk off, and we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> this next piece is a piece from my time with Celtic Thunder. Um, Celtic Thunder, uh, some of you may or may not have heard of. Um, it's a, a show that I was put in uh, by uh, a man by the name of Phil Coulter. And Phil came to me all those years ago saying, Paul, I have a, a show I want you to be involved in. I said, okay. And he described it as five guys. And uh, no, thank you very much. My first reaction was, no, thank you because I was, I was sure it was a boy band. You know, the way it was going on. He goes, no, when you see George and stuff, you'll realize it's not. Um, <laughs> and uh, he says, and also your nose is huge. There's no way you'd get into any boy band with that. <laughs> so it was a very ex exciting experience, you know. Um, the five of us came from different walks of life. Um, you know, for example, George came from building buses in Scotland. You know, um, Ryan came from an accountancy firm. Uh, Keith came from the pub. <laughs> um, I came from singing at funerals. And then Damien came from the womb. <laughs> Onto the stage. The womb to the stage. Um, and, um, you know, it was, it was a, a remarkable experience in our life because, you know, we didn't really know what lay ahead. None of us knew. And um, there was a sparkle in all of our eyes. You know, and that, in the first show in particular, you'll see it. There was something very special about that first show. Um, and I, it hasn't been replicated. I don't care if I'm insulting anybody. It hasn't been replicated, and it never will be replicated. Because that moment was just a very special moment in Dublin. We didn't know what lay ahead. It could have been an absolute disaster, or it could have been brilliant. And it was. And it was great fun. And I had a great time with them. And we traveled a lot, and we did an awful lot. Until we got to Canada. Oh. <laughs> and we made a show called Storm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> when I think of that show, <laughs> what was she thinking? <laughs> like, I don't know what was going on in the show. I, Jen, I was in the show. <laughs> it was a village. It, we, we, we were all set up. I don't know if any of you were. We were all set up. Brian, sorry to bother you here. But we were all set up in this, in this aircraft hangar, right? Not even lying. That's where we were set up, right? And this massive set was constructed before our eyes, you know. And there was, there was trees flown in from Florida. That's the budget. The budget must have been ginormous. It certainly wasn't big enough to pay us very well. But they flew bloody trees in from Florida to Canada. They, trees. There was none in Canada available, see what I mean. And they had two wooden sheds, if you remember. And one all the women of the village lived in. And all, all the men lived in the other, I don't know how anybody got pregnant. But, like a kind of an Arab community, you know, like boys in one and the girls in the other, like an Arab wedding, you know. And then, um, and we all were given roles, you know, like, so George looked like he'd just come back from a two-week holiday in Greece, you know, walking around in sandals and beige, linen trousers, carrying wood. Like, we just assumed he was the elder of the village. You know? And Damien looked like he was, you know, just after falling out of Oliver Twist, you know, cleaning chimneys or something. The dirty, raggedy trousers. And, and, and Keith, Keith was like a, a robber or something, a gypsy. He was robbing people. Or something, um, a highwayman or something, right? Whatever. Um, then Ryan was a gypsy with, with a top off and in Sharon Brown's pajama bottoms. No word of a lie. And he he lived on the other side of the village with five gay ca Canadian dancers. <laughs> And then I, it was like, they, they figured out the four of us, like, what do we do with Paul? What do we do with Paul? Oh, just like, put him in the wall. <laughs> so like, I lived in the wall, right? There was a hole in the wall. And I would just come out and sing a miserable love song every now and again, and then go back into the wall. I was like, kind of the village creep. You know, like, I, I, I literally, I, would listen, I lived here. This is where I lived. And then as soon as a sad song would start, <laughs> I would sing my song. <laughs> and then at the end of it all, we all just got together then eventually and had a dance-off with the gay gypsies from Canada. And that was the show. There was no script. It was crazy. I'm thinking I might just do it on drugs and see if, if there's something that I've missed, you know. Maybe if you pop some of the magic mushrooms or something, there's a story there that I haven't seen. It was incredible. It was an incredible moment. Um, we never toured it, thank God. Um, but anyways, I'm going to sing a song from the first show um, now. Uh, it needed it or no introduction. I would like to dedicate it to uh, the memory of George Donaldson, of course, who we lost uh, quite quickly and quite tragically at the age of 46. Um, and people often get sad when they, when they talk about George or when they think of George and so forth. I will say this for what it's worth. George worked in a factory in Scotland on the line, putting parts on a bus. And he thought his ambitions and his dreams of being on the stage were over. And then all of a sudden, in his late thirties, he was plucked out of Glasgow and put on the stage in Radio City. And he was living the dream. He was the last fella on the bus every night. He was out there signing autographs, having people hugging him. You know, he was living the dream. So I always say to people, don't feel sorry for George. He absolutely lived the dream. And I would love to say that when my time comes, that I died knowing that I was happy out and living the dream. Mm. So this is for the memory of George Johnson. It's called Remember Me, but according to me. Oh. The cup fell. 
Oh 